We're talking actors and directors who put on the shows. We're talking playwrights and designers who you'll want to know. From the very first rehearsal to the final curtain call. We, we might, might be off, 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 off Broadway, but we're talking about it all. Because we're two local gals with global pal. It's everything, everything, everything here. With Benita and Ellen. Thank you for your patience. No. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everything Theater Podcast Backstage episode. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And I'm Benita Zahn. And you know, look, we love talking to all the fabulous performers and directors and scenic folks and music folks. But you know, every so often, Ellen, it's fun to just have a little gal chat. Yeah, a little chit chat. I think that's why we originally promoted the show, right? So, um, some chicks chat in theater. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, listen, you got a lot of stuff going on, but we've got to give a great plug to a fabulous local company doing a really neat show. Talk about chicks, but go ahead. Yeah, so Harbinger Theater is finishing up their season. It's been a groundbreaking season for them. They've been doing phenomenal work that's been so well received. And, you know, on the show, we love them. And uh, they are finishing up with Mrs. Packard. Let me tell you about this crazy thing. They didn't even know about this until they read the script. Um, it's about Elizabeth Parsons Ware Packard real woman who uh, was committed to an insane asylum for three years because she disagreed with her husband. Uh, she documented and bu publicized the abuses she suffered and changed the law, empowering women to not be confined against their will due to their mental state. So that really, wow. really happened. And Oh, goodness, I'll, I'll hold my tongue about talking about politics, but mm -hmm. just because stuff once happened and doesn't, just remember the the freedoms that you have. Absolutely. And don't take them for granted. Yeah. I mean, how terrifying to have an argument and then there's your life. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. It, this is packing some powerful punches. You got uh, Kathleen Carey, um, directed by Chris Foster, and just 16, I think, actors um, throughout the community who are well-loved. Uh, it's going to be great. It opens December 7th at the Albany Barn, and it runs for two weekends. Uh, so make sure you get those tickets and go out and support Harbinger. It's a date, girl. Yeah, seriously. But we got to go in between your stuff. Yeah, I know. This is the problem of being in a show. We talk about this all the time. It's like, when can I see yours? I think Mrs. Packard has, yeah, they have a preview. Let's see, did I write that down? What day their preview is? On the 6th. I think that's the only day I can go. Because yes, I'm doing Best Christmas Pageant Ever with Playhouse Stage Company, which has been a hoot, but we run pretty much all of December. So any shows in December, I'm sorry. I wish I could see you, but... Yeah. I may be able to go with you. Oh, good. Six. Perfect. So we can chit chat <laughs> about that. And this awesome. little Christmas pageant opens. Uh, we open on, is it the first? I should know this off the top of my head, but I always want to check. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. December 1st. And we run all the way up to the 23rd. We had Thursday, Friday, two on Saturday and Sunday. So plenty of chances to check it out. And this is, uh, um, I mean, you know, with Playhouse Stage, uh, you're on the board. <laughs> but they, uh, this season is all about kind of merging professional adults and the amazing young performers that have come through uh, yeah. all the training and everything at Playhouse Stage. And this company, I mean... This is a, a young, young cast, you know, all the leads are grade school, you know, they are, they're young and they are so good and they have think, so much energy. Yeah. Folks, <laughs> yes. Folks don't realize they think kids, eh, these kids are pros in many ways. A couple of years ago, when I had the good fortune to be in the cast of Ragtime, uh, one of the best performers on stage was Ava Papaleo. You know, she's the youngest of the Papaleo, the phenomenally talented Papaleo girls. I think she was 10 at the time. Mm. And 
we had a little interaction on the stage, you know, part of the show. And I was, whoo, you know, get on your toes, sister, because she knows her stuff. And her older sisters are, are phenomenal performers. So if anyone at any point, or if you're sharing with someone, those of you who are listening in and watching the podcast and you say, yeah, I want to go see the show. And they're like, oh, it's kids. Set them straight. Yeah. These are not just any kids. They're unbelievable what they bring to it. So I'm sure you're on your toes, Helen. Oh yeah, definitely. They they make me work hard because I kind of stay up to their level. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go home and sleep hard after you put your two little ones to sleep. Yep, exactly. And yeah. you were the fun part is you were in this show as a kid. This is amazing. Yes. So it just the cosmos is, you know, works in wondrous ways sometimes that when I was four years old, I was put into a community production of Best Christmas Pageant Ever because my mom and my brothers were in it. I was too young being four. And one day my mom couldn't find a babysitter or the babysitter fell through or something happened. So I had to get dragged to rehearsal. And she went, my mom went and apologized to the director, said, I'm so sorry, but she's very quiet. She'll just sit here and she won't bother, you know, anybody. <laughs> And about halfway through, he came up to me and he said, Ellen, would you like to be in the show? Because we need baby angels for the pageant part of the best Christmas pageant ever. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of perfect. You're four years old. If you wander off the stage, that's what a four-year-old would do. <laughs> if you <laughs> giggle at something, that's what a four-year-old would do. So it would be completely realistic. So I did that when I was four. And now... Uh, I am playing the same role that my mom played in that production. And ironically, my daughter is four years old. There was a little talk of like, do we throw her into the show? We ended up not doing it. <laughs> but this is a different adaptation too. This is a musical. It's a little bit of a, a grander production um, than, that, than that last one. But it's just the timing of it is so fascinating. It's fun. beautiful. Yeah. So that's what ruined you. I mean, I mean, got you hooked on theater. hundred <laughs> <laughs> yeah, percent. I'll um, tell a very embarrassing story that my mom <laughs> reminds me of all the time of apparently when I was four, being a baby angel, I was so committed to the bit that there was a performance where I had to go to the bathroom and I was on stage and I felt I wasn't allowed to leave the stage because that's what I was told. And I had an accident <laughs> during the performance. Guess what a four-year-old should do? <laughs> I bet you stole the show at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the things that, you know, we've often talked to folks about what's the most embarrassing or like the least expected that happened on stage. Well, Ellen, you know, you're in the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, I don't remember this. Um, you know, I was four, but I don't know if anyone really noticed that it happened. I, I guess my mom said I was pretty quiet about it. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you know, I don't I think it was you was asking, it could have been um Patrick White about Christmas holiday shows. And yeah. do you seek them out? Do you, you, I'm asking sort of in the broad sense, do you like them? Is there a Christmas show that you seek out whenever you can? How do you feel? I mean, obviously you're in one, it's fun, and this has a sentimental value to you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fascinating to think about theater companies that do every year say we need our holiday show um, and the ones that don't really bother with the holiday show and I think the challenge is there's kind of a limited number of good holiday shows out there so if you do that route you're in competition potentially with other people I mean I you know I spent years in Chicago and the Goodman does a Christmas Carol every year I mean that's their thing so if you're in Chicago and you want to do a Christmas Carol you're up against the Goodman Theater which is pretty big competition but, you know, but if you do a good holiday show, it can be a big moneymaker because a lot of families come out to see all those shows. Yeah. It's like seeing the Nutcracker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had seen it in New York, uh, probably in my early teens. And then, you know, that's, whew, I saw it again. I've seen some productions that probably shouldn't have been mounted. 
and then went back last year with my cousin and friends and saw it again and thought, okay, I'll go along for the ride. But it's been reimagined mm. in some ways. So I you that was fun. And I, I wonder, Ellen, if if even the ones who went to the Goodman, you know, every year, do you because we change. Yeah. So do we bring a different us to the theater for the same show? Mm-hmm. Do we see it differently? I don't know. It, it's interesting, but you're right. They they are money makers. Yeah. It's, I hate to call it sort of the Neil Simon of, you know, but, and right now, audiences are, are still seeking out something that makes you feel good. Yeah, 100%. So I've got a question. What is it with this whole movement towards no intermission? Yeah, that's become a big thing. Um, I kind of, I personally love it. <laughs> get in, get out? As much as I love theater, I like my theater concise. I like it in one sitting. Uh, well, I mean, because I understand the 90 minute show is kind of what's accepted as you can pull off 90 minutes without intermission. If you're right. pushing past 90 minutes, then you should put one in. Personally, I don't know. I mean, I sit through two, three hour movies and... I'm fine. I don't have to go to the bathroom or get something to eat, you know? Um, but I know that that's a rare stance. I think, I think other people get very fidgety when you start reaching that 90 minute mark. Yeah. And um, but yeah. I, I wonder also about just like you do, you know, theaters do Christmas shows because they're money makers. Then the theater doesn't own the concessions because yes. there's money there too. That is, that is a tricky thing. I know that's a, a big battle for a lot of people. Like, okay, we're going to do this no intermission show, but that means we're cutting out revenue that we that can bring in a lot of money. Yeah. Do you like a, a one actor? Um, I'm so used to it now. Yeah. You know, I just, what are you, you detank, but you don't retank before you go in and then all is good. <laughs> We were just in the city uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and we saw a uh, um hair braiding salon. Okay. No intermission. Mm -hmm. And there was a point where I was expecting it. The script sort of felt like it. Mm. Um, it was wonderful. It The cast was, um, they were all women of color. It was written fabulously well there was only one monologue that i thought let the actress actor down but otherwise it was a hoot yeah and and caught you in the heart some too mm, mm -hmm. so it was uh a little just something a little different yeah you know not not big and splashy and all women lovely yeah well, I was going to say, um, speaking of splashy, <laughs> uh, my latest trip down, I saw the shark is broken. I hear that's fabulous. Oh, it's so good. Um, it's, it's a one actor, but that's, uh, you know, a one act play, but that's all it needs to be because it's just this beautiful slice of, you know, life. <laughs> and, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's the story of making Jaws and um, how Robert Shaw, uh, his son, Ian Shaw, wrote this. And he's playing his father as uh, Quint in Jaws, right? Um, but also as Robert Shaw, the actor, because it's all right. about all the time that the three main actors had to sit around waiting for this mechanical shark to work. And they're all convinced the movie's going to be awful and... You know, Richard Dreyfus is very young in his career, and um, it is just a delight if you, if you have a chance to catch that one. It's fun. That, yeah, and there's been so much locally, and I, I've got to I, I want there was so much I wanted to see, but I had that four week cough, and I thought yeah. the last thing anybody wants is to have somebody in the house coughing. And and I already a number of years ago, it was right before the world shut down. I had some kind of a bug and a cough. I, I tend to this. 
And we went to see the band's visit with a group of friends in the city. We sat maybe like the fourth row. And there's that beautiful solo that the woman sings. It's haunting. And I start coughing. Oh. And the more you don't want to cough, the more you cough. And I thought I could feel the vibe. I could almost feel her that in another world, she would have stopped the theater, stopped the show and said, you out. <laughs> you know? And I, I've got my scarf on my face and somebody hands me a cough drop. I was mortified. Isn't I, I that the band's visit. So I didn't go to anything until just this past weekend when I knew I could sit through it. Isn't that like some weird psychological thing when you know that you shouldn't cough and for some reason it's so much worse than it's ever been in your entire life and that tickle in your throat that it just nothing works. <laughs> right. Right. So we finally did get to go see. We did went to the see the production um by creative artists. Um oh I wonder the sound inside. Mm. A very powerful two-hander, uh, beautifully done by uh, with Colleen Lovett and uh, Russell Roberts, who you directed, yeah, in um, at, at Albany Civic Theater. What was that yeah. last? Uh, uh, in last February, yeah, February. Jump. Um, he was phenomenal and so good to work with really lovely I, i'm not taking anything away from colleen please she just wow i i texted her and wrote bravo with a run of exclamation points it's uh to carry that show is she just did a lovely lovely job um and you you kind of knowing her work you expect that mm -hmm. and then seeing russell but a very thoughtful and painful show hmm. a bold choice by creative uh, artists yeah and, uh, bravo aaron holbreiter and i know they've got some other great stuff in the uh, pipeline hmm. and i bring that up because we i mentioned before that you know every people are looking for light or uplifting or happy and this wasn't so i'm just going to encourage you to take a flyer at something that might make you move a little in your seat hmm. you know again like seeing a show with kids mixed audiences in terms of exposure to the theater yeah but bravo to them for tackling this and executing it so well. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry to miss, um, they were doing Lanford Wilson down at um, Bridge Street Theater. Oh. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I said it again because of <laughs> Christmas pageant, I have to miss the sound inside, but um, it's funny because we've been rehearsing at the uh, studios uh, in Cohoes, and all of a sudden it's like everyone you know is there. So Creative License was uh, rehearsing there. Mrs. Packard came in for a read through and it's like, hi, everybody. This is where every all the cool kids hang out. It's my first time we're working in these studios. <laughs> yeah, it really, it is. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, and a lot coming down the pipe also. And there, I think that I would like to believe that we're pretty much back up. I think the last figure I saw out of the city was something like 92%, I think was a figure, me and numbers, but I, I think it was 92% or pretty close okay. to that, which is so encouraging. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, and some big splashy shows coming through proctors mm -hmm. uh, i think the next one is what the girl from the north country yep uh followed by, uh, then beetlejuice i believe yeah oh, beetlejuice and, is somewhere in the season yeah right and they've got tina coming in yeah mm -hmm. um and i know that they've still been looking to hit their stride mm -hmm as and i wonder you know we can talk about it and let us know what you think Do, are you comfortable 
in a theater now? Are you, what are you seeing in terms of the houses that you're at locally and out of town? Do you feel we're back? Yeah. I mean, personally, it's interesting. I don't know how you feel about this, but a couple of times, especially going to Proctor's because it's such a big house mm -hmm. um, and knowing that we're going into, well, we are in flu, COVID season, RSV. Oh my gosh, there was RSV going through everybody <laughs> a few weeks ago. Um, and sitting in that house, there's kind of a moment where I thought, oh, should I, should I mask up? Like maybe I should mask up. And then I thought, Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> and then I didn't. And I don't yeah. know if that's kind of how a lot of people are feeling these days. I mean, I saw very few masks. Yeah. So it's, I know it's just a new norm that people just know there's a potential to get exposed. And I think that may be the case, you know, and the old health reporter in me, I still follow this stuff. And as someone pointed out, yeah, flu can be a killer, but it's still outdistanced by COVID mm. and it, it no no it hasn't gone away let's just be clear it hasn't gone away you, we just you decide what level of risk yeah you feel comfortable with you know it's I'm just I just jumped in to pull up the uh so it's um the girl from the north country is mm. the fifth through the tenth at Proctor's and then it's Annie Oh, right. Not quite a holiday so show. <laughs> right. That's the 9th through the 14th of January. Ellen, January. It's here. Yeah, I know. Then the one I'm looking forward to in particular is six. Have you seen six I, yet? No, that was, I didn't get to see it. You've seen it. I did. Yeah. And I wanted to, and every time something else, and I would see something great, but didn't get to see six. That's May. Which real uh, quick side note, um, like speaking of those one actors, six is a one act musical, which just like never happens, but it's fabulous because you don't want it to stop. You just want to keep jiving with it. And it's perfect with no intermission. <laughs> and then Beetlejuice, that's June 18th through the 23rd. And Tina is July 30 through August 4. Which is a really interesting time. I wonder if they'll be able to pull some of this Saratoga audience. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm What are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, well, I do. One thing that wasn't listed because it's a bonus is Les Mis is coming back. Yes, tomorrow. that's right. And I've got that's I've got right. tickets. You do, Les Mis, but um, but I mean, all, I haven't seen most of them. Um, Beetlejuice, I'm very curious about because I've heard really good things, and I'm not a big fan of the movie turned musical. But I don't know, Beetlejuice is such an out there movie <laughs> that I'm very curious to see how it's been adapted. I would love to go see it. Didn't get to see it either time, and I agree with you. I want to throw one more in here. It's not there. It's and they've been they've sponsored us in the past. So it's the Eye Theater at Saratoga. Oh yeah, yeah. They've done some nice stuff, and they've got Cosmic Christmas. It's a holiday speakeasy music event, and that's December twenty two and the 23rd so you can jump online for something a little bit different also have to give kudos to the black theater troupe of upstate new york and jean remy monet they got a special award at the berkeys the berkshire awards right. yeah and uh bravo to what they're doing and uh they've got um I'm trying to think. I it, uh, Angelique uh, Powell is in it. Uh, the Mountaintop, I think. Yes, the Mountaintop. Mm -hmm. Mountaintop is. They've just cast that. So you, the truth be told, if you can't find something to see in the five one eight, you're not looking hard enough. No. Oh my gosh, there's so much, and uh, and I'm speaking of non traditional performances. I couldn't, wouldn't really call it a play. I don't. I haven't seen it yet, but. For years, I've been tempted by Santa's Magical Express. Do you know about this? 
<laughs> a lot of local performers. So many local performers do this, especially Mike McDermott, um, who's right. wonderful. Um, he plays the jolly old St. Nick. And <laughs> um, uh, they uh, say usually four and up is the re recommended age. So I'm taking my daughter for the first time. But as far as I understand it, there's like a whole bus ride with actors interacting with you. And you have to yeah. save Christmas. <laughs> I'm very yeah. much looking forward to that. When you see the pictures, you go, I know, yeah, and them, and oh, and it's, and all, and everybody is so um, imbued with the spirit. Yeah. So I think you'll have an absolutely wonderful time. Should also point out that uh, Building on Love, which is a fundraising, uh, an organ fundraising, it's an organization that provides grants for housing and transportation for families who are dealing with a child with a critical illness. Mm -hmm. We love, and I'm on, and I'm on the board. We like to get to them early to help them so that they can then, you know, get on with the planning. But they've got built, they've got uh, Finding Christmas, um, which they is a uh, local music uh, students and talent will be performing at the uh, at the Cahoes Music Hall. And I should have pulled. I didn't know that I was going to plug it. So I will quick pull up the date for you. Um, but th that's a fun, you know, you can, I think a lot of kids come and eat candy and do anything else. Yeah. Um, I know that also one of my students is doing a <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Show at the palace, but it's a, but they've holidayed it up. <laughs> I think so, I heard about this. It's the same, like you have the same bag of goodies that you throw and everything, but it's like Christmas themed and everybody wears Santa hats. And apparently Barry uh, uh, Bostwick, who originated the role of yes. Brad, is going to be there. So. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he's. He was rather. Fetching in the movie. I know that was a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me get a date on, on that one. When is that? Um, December 12th. December 12th. Finding Christmas. Here we go. And that is, it's a P Peak Music Studios uh, are bringing their students to this and uh, a host of others. And they will be performing. It's, it's just, it's a cast of... Uh, Who's who? Oh, I'm sorry. This it's going to be at the Palace this year on the 10th of December. It had mm -hmm. been at Cahoe's Music Hall, but this year it's the 10th of December, 2 p.m. at the Palace Theater. So another nice opportunity for families to come on out and enjoy the spirit of the holidays. What's your? Do you have like a holiday show that you like to see pop up and and go attend? Um, you know, uh, I like a Christmas story. Yeah, the, the musical. Yeah, Ralphie to the rescue. It's just, <laughs> it, it's just, it's silly fun. In fact, and I, I see, I can't think of the. She's out of town with it, but uh, Brenny, um, I want to say Raybine, but she goes by a different. Life. Brenny Campbell mm. um, is playing the mother in that. Somebody's gonna say, "Oh, they give Brenny a, a shout out," and she's just wonderful. She uh, finished a run up. Uh, she this summer she'd been done the second show at the. Uh, Lake George Dinner Theater. Mm -hmm. And I think she's out, I think it's in Pittsburgh is where she's performing. It's oh. out of town, but I want to just give her the kudos for the great work that she always does. And I'm sure she's having, I saw a picture. She's like, oh my God, she looks fabulous. <laughs> How about you? Um, I do like Christmas Carol, you know, and like everybody's got their own little flavor to it, which is fun. And any kind of little spoof of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so many out there. I'm I'm waiting for uh I feel like the uh oh, what are they called? Mischief company, the guys who do the, the play that goes wrong and Peter Pan goes wrong. I just saw them do um uh the mind mangler. It was a limited run and it was two of the guys from the company and it was all about someone who's a mentalist and it was amazing. But I'm I I think they need to do um a christmas carol goes wrong oh my word that would be fabulous yeah <laughs> i'm there yeah <laughs> take my money <laughs> can we get them on 
We should try. Yeah. Yeah. What fun guys. You know, Ellen, I'll call anybody. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll plan. If and if anybody's got someone that they want to hear um and learn more about, you know, let us know. We've got some great uh folks lined up and uh in the hopper. But um we'll we take requests, maybe. Yeah. One more plug. Ellen. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, catch those holiday shows. But if you're looking for something a little meatier, that is uh, a fascinating story you have from the 7th through the uh, 16th to go check out Mrs. Packard at Harbinger Theater at the Albany Barn. Um, it sounds phenomenal. I mean, the last show I went to that was a Harbinger show was sold out and they were they were literally bringing folding chairs in to fit more people in. So get your tickets early, check it out. And buy tickets, go see Ellen in the best Christmas show ever. Best Christmas pageant ever. Pageant, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the Cahoes Music Hall. Mm -hmm. And you run the first through the 23rd. So there we, there you have it. Yeah. And I okay. sing. <laughs> I can't wait to hear. It's been so long since I've done a musical. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Yeah. When did you get the rust off? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And I'm Benita Zahn. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Everything Theater Podcast. Special thanks goes out to Alice Grinling for our photography and Justin Friello for composing our amazing theme song. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to share your thoughts or what's going on in your theater community, you can reach out to us on social media or through our email at everythingtheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Till next time. It's everything, everything, everything.